I don't think slavery ended in 1865. I think it just evolved. So this will be the entrance to the museum, and people will be directed over into this corner, uh, which will be where we replicate a slave warehouse. And it'll go from slavery to lynching, to segregation, to mass incarceration. Why does the United States have the highest rate of incarceration in the world? Why are there six million people on probation or parole? Why is it true that today, one in three black male babies born in this country is expected to go to jail or prison? There is a line from slavery through racial terrorism, through segregation, that is evident in what we see in our criminal justice system today. I'm persuaded that we really won't eliminate the problems of discrimination in the criminal justice system, in the education system, in the employment system, until we change the narrative of racial difference that we have all accepted. I believe that at the end of the 1960s, when we passed the Civil Rights Act and the Voting Rights Act, we should have committed to a process of truth and reconciliation, but we didn't do that. If you go to South Africa, uh, you are not allowed to spend time in that country without confronting the history and the legacy of apartheid. If you go to Germany, you'll see a nation that has confronted the legacy of the Holocaust. In this country, we do the opposite. And I think that has to change. I think we have to be more honest. This exhibit has been created by jars with the names of lynching victims. Sometimes multiple people would be lynched at the same time, so this was an incident where five people were lynched all at the same time in Carrollton, Alabama, including a married couple. Well, most people don't understand that uh, lynching was racial terrorism because it wasn't just the people who were victimized, it was the entire community. These acts of humiliation and degradation created this desensitizing to victimization. We are indifferent to evidence of bias and discrimination. We are indifferent to innocent people being wrongly condemned on death row for 30 years. I think there's a historical root to that silence. My light bulb moment, it was only eight or nine years ago when I went to Africa for the first time. This young attorney met me at the airport and he took me to the ocean. She said, I wanted to bring you here to say something to you. And this lawyer turned to me and he said, I just want to say, I'm sorry, because this is where we lost you. And all of a sudden, by just thinking about history shifted. When I came back to Montgomery, uh, the walk I make all the time down this street felt different. I was thinking about being on the other side of that injury, of that violence, of that abuse. I did begin to think about the ways in which we have to change our understanding of this story. And that's why we're creating a museum. That's why we have to have truth and reconciliation in this country.